In this video, we're going to look at another way that we can use the equilibrium expression, which is to calculate a quantity known as the reaction quotient, which is symbolized with a capital letter Q. So the reaction quotient, much like the equilibrium constant, can be calculated using the equilibrium expression. But this is the value of the equilibrium expression as calculated at any point in the reaction. So just like we plug values into the equilibrium expression to calculate K, we can plug different values in to calculate Q. So it's the value of the equilibrium expression at any point in the reaction. And what this is telling us is essentially the product to reactant ratio for wherever we happen to be. For whatever state our system currently exists in. For however the system exists right now. Or at whatever point in time we're calculating it. remember that our equilibrium constant k was really really similar to this k and q get confused all the time because they're both calculated using the same expression which is weird how can we have the same mathematical expression give us two different quantities and the answer is that we're plugging in different values from different points in our reaction so K is the value of the equilibrium expression, as we discussed last time. For the system at equilibrium. So we're only calculating K if we're plugging in concentrations that we know are from when the system has already reached equilibrium, that it has already achieved its most stable state, that it's not going anywhere anymore. Um, so K represents the most stable product to reactant ratio. in contrast to Q, which is just whatever you happen to have. It may or may not be particularly stable. So the way I kind of think about Q and K is that Q is essentially telling us, we're asking the question, where are we or where is the system? What is the state of the system? However we want to think about it. Where is the system right now? And K tells us where does the system want to end up? Reactions always proceed towards equilibrium. Equilibrium is always the final destination of any chemical reaction. It will continue until it reaches equilibrium, if nothing stops it from getting there. Um, Q is just an indicator of where are we at currently or where are we at in whatever point in time I chose to study. So though they are calculated very similarly, they give us very different information. Q is our current state, K is our destination. 
And what this allows us to do is essentially compare these two values to figure out which way our reaction is going to go. So by comparing the values of Q and K, we can actually determine if a system is at equilibrium And if it's not, we can determine which way it will go to get there. Is it going to go forward or is it going to go in reverse? So if we keep in mind that our equilibrium expression in the most general terms is the concentration of our products raised to some power over the concentration of reactants raised to some power. Our products are on top, our reactants are on the bottom. We can think about what does it mean in terms of our product to reactant ratio for K, um, for Q to be too small or Q to be too big. Remembering that K is always kind of our goal, that our system is always going to move towards the state where the product to reactant ratio is equal to K, that that's always our destination. So when Q is less than K, when Q is too small, that means our numerator is too small or our denominator is too big. We have too much reactant and not enough product currently in our system. In order for this to be at equilibrium. So that means in order to fix it, our system wants to get rid of reactant and form more product. That is the reaction running in the forward direction. We'll also see this referred to sometimes as running to the right or shifting to the right. that by thinking about what our expression is, since both of these are, can be calculated using the equilibrium expression, we can kind of identify the problem. If we're not at equilibrium, if Q is too small, we need to get rid of some reactant, we need to make some more product, which means our reaction goes forward. When Q is greater than K, we have the opposite issue. Q the current state of our system is too big, means we have too much product, which is in the numerator of our expression, or not enough reactant for this system to be at equilibrium. So to fix that, a reaction will get rid of some product and form some reactant, which is our reaction running in reverse. Um, if you want kind of a 
memory trick to help you remember which way things go. Um, if you envision Q and K on a number line. So for our first situation here, where Q is less than K, we envision a number line. Smaller numbers go on the left, larger numbers go on the right. Standard issue number line here. If Q is smaller and K is larger, if this is our starting point, um, where Q is less than K, um, our system always wants to move towards equilibrium. So K is sort of our destination. Q is our current state. Our destination never changes, our current state can. So Q can move and Q will always want to move towards K. If that happens here, in order for Q to move towards K, it needs to move to the right, which is the direction that the reaction is going to shift. So this is just kind of a visual like memory trick to help you remember when Q is less than K, the reaction shifts to the right. If we think through it down here, when Q is greater than K, we're starting out with Q on the right, K on the left, K is our destination that doesn't move, but our current state can change in order for Q to get to K, it would need to move to the left. So that can kind of help you remember which way things go. If Q is equal to K, that means that your product to reactant ratio is already exactly what it wants to be already at that most stable ratio. So this represents your system already at equilibrium. Which means the reaction will not proceed in either direction. So if we know the value of K for a reaction and we know the concentrations at any point in time, that can allow us to calculate Q, which can help us figure out which way a reaction needs to go in order to get to equilibrium. So what we'll need to do here is write our equilibrium expression. That's pretty much always going to be the first step for all of the equilibrium problems we're going to be doing. Then we can calculate the value of Q. We have concentrations here from just some random point in time. You're told a flask is filled such that we have these concentrations. We put some stuff in a flask. Um, we don't know this to be at equilibrium. So the value that we're calculating if we plug these values into the equilibrium expression is the reaction quotient. We're given the value for K up here, um, but we can calculate Q and then all we will need to do is compare Q and K. Whichever one's bigger tells us um, the direction in which this reaction will need to go in order to get to equilibrium. So why don't you take a moment um, and try that now. So first thing is writing our equilibrium expression. If we look at the reaction as it is given on our product side, we have HI with a coefficient of two, which will become the exponent. On the reactant side, we have H2 and I2. 
So our equilibrium expression will be the concentration of HI squared divided by the concentration of A2 time, H2 times the concentration of I2. Um, to calculate Q, we just need to plug in the values that were given to us to our equilibrium expression. So H2 was 0 0.0529, I2 was the same, and H2 was 1.24, and that is going to get squared. Don't forget your exponents when you actually go to plug in numbers. Really common mistake. So this gives us a value of 549. So we were told initially that K is 65.4. We just calculated that Q is 549. So Q is definitely greater than K, which means we currently have too much product, not enough reactant in our system. So our reaction is going to run in reverse or to the left in order to reach equilibrium. 